There will be peace when we achieve our goals, the ones you just mentioned. Now let's return to these goals. They have not changed. I'll remind you of what we talked about. The denazification of Ukraine, its demilitarization, its neutral status. Well, Vladimir Putin there saying there will be no peace in Ukraine until Russia is good and ready. Uh, the Russian president was taking questions from the public and from journalists at his end-of-the-year press conference in Moscow. Mr Putin also said Russia currently had enough fighters and there was no need for another wave of mobilization. The Russian president, who's running for re-election in March, uh, cancelled last year's press conference amid uh, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So let's take a closer look at uh, what we saw and heard today with Konstantin Eger, DW's uh, Russia analyst. Uh, welcome back, Konstantin. Um, let's start with your assessment of the state of Mr Putin's leadership uh, right now. Has he paid any political price for the war in Ukraine? Look, in a country where there is no politics, it's very difficult to pay a political price. Uh, so far, it looks as Mr Putin is in full control of the state bureaucracy, which in turn is in full control of the country. There is no visible opposition. There is no free media left in the country. And uh, so Mr. Putin is uh, free to spin tales on television in front of the audience, which is ordered, uh, except the foreign correspondents, uh, ordered to ask certain questions. And uh, he's unopposed. He's in control of this kind of scripted semi-politics. All right, so let's take a look then at a couple of things that uh, came up today. Uh, on the war in Ukraine, uh, he was uh, quick to draw parallels with what's happening in Gaza, which he's described as a failure of American uh, foreign policy. Just how might Vladimir Putin hope to use the, 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 uh, the war in Gaza to bolster Russia's international standing? Well, he's already using it. Uh, his aim since uh, the beginning of full-scale invasion last February was actually to draw attention and to gather sympathy in the so-called global south. His aim is to talk to you know Brazil and South Africa and India and China rather than the United States and their allies. And in this respect, he was, well, relatively successful. And the war in Gaza, in which he, well, give or take, let's face it, uh, looks like he sided with Hamas and the Palestinians rather than the Israelis, um, he gained some points in uh, the eyes of uh, the Global South, where there is a very visible sort of anti-Israeli feeling. Uh, whether it will pay real political dividends, that's, that's a big question. I don't think that right. it gives Putin such a big global leverage. And with the United States uh, preoccupied with Gaza and Ukraine, of course, perhaps that leaves the stage set for some new kids on the world block. Just take a look. Russian-Chinese relations are one of the essential guarantors of stability in the world. We see what is happening both around Russia and around China. We see attempts by the West to switch NATO activities to Asia. So how is the Russia-China friendship without limits, as described by uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping, how is that working out for Russia? Well, if you judge by Putin's press conference, then Russia has become very much a junior partner to China. And if you look at this the, uh, Putin's rhetoric. And I feel I've been to this press conferences when I worked in Moscow many times. I mean, he called Xi Jinping a friend twice. That is something that's very unusual for Putin. And to me, it looks like, uh, well, I wouldn't say sycophancy, but trying to be nice without any big reason to do that, apart from the fact that China is actually Russia's main mainstay in the world of global economy. And uh, it is actually the senior ally now uh, in uh, to all intents and purposes, because, for example, the Chinese can still talk to the Americans in a way Putin cannot. So, yes, I think that this particular press conference has confirmed that Russia is becoming more and more dependent on China, including, by the way, in consumer, in what consumer can, uh, concerns consumer economics. There were questions during this conference about the predominance of Chinese car on the, cars on the Russian market, and Putin didn't have much to say about it. And uh, frankly, it seems like every day this dependence increases. And let's uh, finish on Mr. Putin on relations with the West. 
As for normalizing relations with the West, this does not only depend on us. We did not spoil our relations. They did. They were constantly trying to push us into the background and neglect our interests. Uh, Constantine, I want you to look into your crystal ball uh, in just a moment, because I'm thinking that it's not even 20 years since NATO and Russia were a lot friendlier, even establishing that, that the NATO-Russia Council uh, back in the day to work on joint security issues. So looking ahead, how do you see Russia's relations with the West in, say, 10 years? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, Phil, but frankly, let me put it like that. As long as Putin is in power, as long as he's in the Kremlin, there is going to be no change. Because for him, and he made it very clear, this is not just about Ukraine. It's about Russia standing up for what he called its sovereignty against the West. It's another question whether this political consensus, this peace and quiet in Russia that Putin imagines exists will continue. Because uh, on, in this video clip that you showed, uh, on the background, we've seen text messages coming up in Russian uh, on screens. These are uncensored. And one of them read, Mr. Putin, when will your Russia, the Russia of your television, become a reality? This is not the Russia we see. So maybe there are tensions which once will explode and we will not be ready for that. But so far, he's in control and he's ready for his, quote unquote, war against the West. OK, thanks for that, Konstantin. Uh, DW Russia analyst, uh, Konstantin Eggert. Thank you.